Although Asian humans develop fermentation primarily for the stabilization of perishable foods, the technology has evolved beyond food preservation into a tool for creating desirable organoleptic, nutritional and functional attributes in food products. Lifestyle choices such as vegetarianism and veganism an increasing interest by consumers in everything perceived natural and promotes health and longevity. Fermentation is also one of the key technologies that is being explored for the conversion of agri-food waste into high-value products such as food ingredients, nutraceuticals, biofuels and industrial chemicals and will continue to play a significant role in the transition from the current fossil fuel based economy to the bio based economy of the future. So let's see the theory behind the food fermentation. Welcome to our YouTube channel Esculenta Science. If you are new to here and want to learn about the food processing technology, please hit the subscribe followed by the bell. Today we are going to talk about food fermentation. Food fermentation can be defined as a controlled microbial growth and enzymatic conversion of major and minor food components. The diversity of microorganisms that can ferment food products is very important and usually the fermentation of one specific product results from the presence of several types of microbes. Food fermentation can be generally classified by acidic fermentation on one hand and alcoholic fermentation on the other hand. The main pylum of bacteria involved in acidic fermentation is firmicutes, which contains the lactic acid bacteria. Lactic acid bacteria with lactobacillus, leuconostoc, lactococcus and streptococcus being the most common starter cultures. Fermentation of dairy, cereal, Vegetables and meat involves lactic acid bacteria with or without the intervention of other bacteria or yeast. Lactic acid bacteria is classified as homo or heterofermentative depending on their metabolic abilities. Homofermentative lactic acid bacteria such as lactococcus produce exclusively lactic acid while heterofermentative lactic acid bacteria like leuconostoc produce a variety of other metabolites leading to more complex organoleptic properties. Another pylum of bacteria playing a role of acidic fermentation is proteobacteria with acetobacter, gluconobacter and gluconacetobacter genera. They mainly produce acetic acid through the oxidation of ethanol but can also use sugars and other compounds. These genera are mainly known to ferment wine into vinegar but have more recently been identified as playing important roles in tea, cocoa and coffee fermentation. Bacteria from actinobacteria pylum can also play a role in food fermentation. Bifidobacterium, which also produce lactic acid, are not usually involved in the fermentation of food, but are often added to dairy products for their probiotic properties. Corinobacterium glutamicum and Propionobacterium are two other actinobacteria members used in specific food fermentation for their release of glutamate and propionate respectively. Alcoholic food fermentation is only performed by yeast, leading to the release of ethanol and carbon dioxide. 
Saccharomyces are the by far the most commonly used yeast in food fermentation. And a large number of species and strains have been domesticated and selected for bread, beer, wine and other products fermentation. Saccharomyces convert simple sugars and some polysaccharides to ethanol and carbon dioxide in widely different proportion depending on the strain selected for the specific purposes. Recently, other yeast that used to be considered spoilage or wild fermenters such as the Kera, Tolraspora and Fichia have begun to be used purposely in food fermentation. The fermentation process involves the oxidation of carbohydrates to generate a range of products which are principally organic acids, alcohol and carbon dioxide. Such products have a preservative effect by limiting the growth of spoilage or pathogenic microbiota in the food. This includes many organic acids such as lactic and acetic acid produced such as end products, which provide an acidic environment unfavorable for growth of many pathogenic and spoilage microorganisms. So these are the basic things that you should know about the fermentation. You can search for the details through research papers and books. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for videos like this. Hope to catch you next time and thanks for watching.